I'm right now about to call Kate Strachny. She has a YouTube channel called Story by Data. And what she's doing is she has a video series of uh, that she's calling Humans of Data Science. And it's uh, where she interviews some people who are into data science. And today it's my turn. I know Kate from uh, our previous um, streams for the data science office hours. Yeah. Let's see if she's already here. Yeah, whenever you're ready, just. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm ready. So let's go. Um, hello, my name is Andreas Kretz. I'm not a data scientist. I'm a data engineer and a big data platform architect. So I'm working in the background. I'm uh, I'm doing all the things to get the data, basically from, for instance, from a machine. Um, do the processing, do the storage, uh, figure out how to get the data then to the data scientist so the data scientist can actually do his magic and um, yeah, do the actual analytics and provide value to the customers. And yeah, it's a, it's a more hidden uh, profession. It's not as glamorous as look at me, I'm having done this deep learning model that is doing something really cool, but it's a fun profession. It's very versatile. It never gets boring. So yeah, it's, I personally, I love it. Great. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for joining me on Humans of Data Science. I know thank you me. mentioned you're not a data scientist, but I think without data engineering, we couldn't do data science. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing is, um, I know some stuff about, uh, about data science, but I'm, um, or let's say about, uh, the data scientist shop because I'm working with them and I know, uh, I know stuff about, uh, regression and clustering and so on and deep learning because they need to need to apply it, but I'm not a practitioner in this specific type of field. So I'm more, uh, I'm more uh, working on Hadoop and Kafka and Spark and all those tools, uh, how to figure out what exactly do you use in which case and how do you uh, yeah, process the data so it, it fits already some kind to what the data, what the data scientist needs. Mm -hmm. Right. And okay, so what I wanted to start talking about is your Plumbers of Data Science podcast. I think you're the only one doing, you know, a podcast focused on that. And I wanted to hear what can people expect to, to hear on that podcast? What do you talk about? Yeah. So the podcast, um, actually right now, the podcast is more or less, uh, what I do at YouTube, but only then as an audio only, um, I started with, with the plumbers of data science, uh, podcast, because I always, always saying the engineering is like the plumbing it's, it's in the background it's hidden but it's a huge mess if if things are getting done wrong or something goes wrong and i'm i'm focusing not on machine learning i'm focusing on the actual application of the tools as i said i'm i'm focusing on uh, how do you build a platform with uh, for instance with hadoop and how do you use kafka and stream data um to spark and have a, a batch job or a, a streaming job so it's it's all the the background what you need to yeah, to build a, a a platform and do the engineering work. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I saw a few months ago you posted an article on Medium. It was called A New Scope where you you spoke a bit about your podcast and you mentioned that you're not going to do any editing. It's going to be kind of raw recorded materials and I wanted to ask what was your motivation behind that decision? Yeah. So, um, to be honest, I'm doing a light editing right now, <laughs> but, um, the, the idea here was, um, I'm in the future, I'm going to do this live now, right now I'm just practicing. So I'm, I'm doing this offline. Um, the idea was, um, to switch more into data engineering, uh, is when you look at LinkedIn and, and uh, Facebook and Twitter, every, it's full of data scientists and it's full of machine learning and so on. And I figured out this is this is not what I do. This is not what I'm really good at or, or what I want to do. So I'm coming from a, uh, a computer science background. So I have a, a, a university diploma, 
uh, in applied computer science this is more uh, it's it's hard to translate um it's the appliance part it's more a mechatronics um a diploma with uh, computer science on top of it so it's it's uh, yeah so that you, you you apply it for instance in uh, internet of things use cases and before that i was doing a uh, in germany we have a state certified technicians um, this is a, a, a computer science course, two years full time, where you learn everything from uh, computer networking and so on. Uh, so, yeah, programming. I, I've, there I really got into Java coding and so on. So I'm I, I figured out while I'm I'm doing the well I while I did the data science uh, post. This is not this is not who I am, and so. Let's stick to what you know and what you can do best. Okay, great. And you know, you're doing a lot for the community. You were named the LinkedIn top voice in data and analytics by LinkedIn. And I wanted to ask, where do you find the time? I know you have kids, you have a full-time job. So how do you make time for all this extra stuff? Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, usually um, if it fits, I'm working at night so right now it's uh, almost 11 p.m so um yeah I'm, I'm i'm doing an hour in the evening and then in the mornings five to seven and then i'm basically getting up getting ready to work um helping the wife get the kid into the kindergarten and so and then i'm, I'm working my usual job and then i'm family man then family man and then uh, time for the wife uh, and then when she goes to bed I'm doing a bit <laughs> it's a crazy ride <laughs> um, okay so what's one thing that most people wouldn't be surprised to know about you oh Oof, yeah <laughs> that I'm actually doing this so I, I haven't <laughs> I I haven't advertised this in the family or or among the friends. So the 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 only thing that uh, some friends uh, where some friends have seen that I'm doing this whole uh, social media and YouTube stuff and podcast is when I edited a a uh, ah a video for a for a marriage. I've I've done some uh, oh, like a wedding video a uh, wedding a wedding video and then i uploaded it to my youtube and oh and has a youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> That's so very this, funny. Is, uh, this would be um, a surprise to a lot of people <laughs> yeah i had to do a walkthrough of some new software for for my job and you know i used my skills of creating videos and screen recording so i put that together quickly and people on my team they're like what are you, some kind of editing expert? I'm like, no, no, I didn't know I do it either. So. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you learn all this? I know. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Andreas, so what is a goal that you have for yourself for the next 12 to 18 months? It could be personal or professional. Um, yeah, for me, it's, it's getting, uh, getting awareness to the whole data engineering part. So I'm, I want to build a, a community that is more focused on data engineering than on data science, because it's, it's super important. Um, if, if I'm looking for, uh, or if I'm having job, job openings in this field, it's hard to fill them. And, um, I, I have the feeling I just, I, I don't want to step on any toes here, but I have the feeling that many people who are getting into the data scientist route were actually better in the data engineering route and it's it's yeah it's a it's a problem because the the data scientist is so hip right now and yeah it's hard it's hard to get good people for for data engineering who are already qualified and it's super important because without this doesn't work it's not it's not that uh, with a data scientist you have uh, like Kaggle competitions where you download the data sets and fumble around and, and then you, <laughs> then you have a, a a cool thing that you can show. It's yeah. it's a lot more complicated, and it, it yeah to get the data 
to get the data and to pre-process the data so the data scientists can actually work with it. Yeah, so data scientists, I mean, people claim that they spend 80% of their time cleaning data, right? And I guess what data engineers do is they first collect the data from sensors or, or whatever, and then they pre-clean it, pre-process it before it yeah. even gets to the data scientist. Yeah, yeah, you, you basically bring it into the right structure for the right task, I would say. It's not like you're, um, you're cleaning the data um, in terms of it's easier to process for the data scientist there. So, so you're filtering out some stuff. Um, it's more like yeah, bringing it to, into the right form. And then he is doing all the pre-processing that you've mentioned, the, the 80%. Yeah, it's, a, it's what I can see from, from our data scientists. It's a lot of, the actual uh, pre-processing is a lot of work. That's true. That's absolutely true. And yeah, it's yeah, the, the problem, especially in the field I'm in, in the IoT field is data is messy. It's super messy. And I'm I'm working on basically the full stack. I'm I'm working on uh, machine interfaces, so REST REST API from REST APIs to uh, processing storage and then uh, user experience tasks. So it's I'm 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 doing the whole platform thing, and yeah, that's all right. Well, so the last question I have for you today is, what do you like to do in your spare time? Since you probably have so much time to spend. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm a huge music nut, so I'm a '60s blues music fan, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I have a Gibson Les Paul waiting under the bed, <laughs> which <laughs> basically never gets played. So if I if I would have time, sometimes I'm going to get Goldie out and uh, play some stuff. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. All right. Well, Andreas, thank you so much for being on Humans of Data Science. Thanks for having me, Kate.